I'm Dave Greenwood, and this is Overcoming Distractions. If you are an adult with ADHD, a busy professional, an entrepreneur, a high achiever, or just need some strategies to navigate your adult ADHD, you're in the right place. Who am I? I'm an entrepreneur with ADHD and the author of two books, Overcoming Distractions and Overcoming Burnout. I coach and mentor people just like you, and together we navigate the ups and downs of adult ADHD. From getting out of our own way to helping people just like you thrive in the workplace. That's what I do. Want more info on working with me? Hit overcomingdistractions.com. Ready? Let's get to today's podcast. All right, people, we're back. And you know what? I'm just going to start this right now before you freak out and and, uh, hit the stop button because we're going to talk about goal setting. And I know a lot of you totally freak out or half freak out when you hear that. So, but I just want you to just stay with us for a few minutes. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll get through this. All right. And as the title of the episode says how to manage the fear of goal setting. So maybe not totally overcome it, but we're going to manage it a little bit. So, um, we're going to talk about goal setting, whether it's short term, long term, what you want to work on, maybe hitting the pause button to make sure you actually can take time to to goal set and kind of manage the ups and downs of maybe some emotions that you might uh, be feeling when you actually even hear the words goal setting. So we are back with Dr. Fiona Peters, expert in ADHD in the workplace. She's a researcher, speaker. She is a super authority on this topic based in the UK, one of my favorite places, London. Uh, Welcome back. Thank you. It's great to be here from sunny London. It must be the one day of the week of the year that we have actual (laughs) sunshine. (laughs) You know, when I've been over, we've actually had some really good luck over the years. And I've told you, I I have relatives in a couple places in in the UK. We've gone over a lot in July and September. And I can tell you the weather was, was spectacular during those seasons. So I don't think I really ran into too many really rainy, rainy days, you know, but I I know they happen there. (laughs) They happen too often. Yeah. But we're coming out of the back of a really wet uh, winter. So it's just really nice to see some sunshine because it's good for the soul, isn't it? Oh, it's you know? good for the brain. It's good for, uh, I, I I can't tell you what uh, looking up to a blue sky does for for my mood and, yeah. and just yeah. honestly it comes down to productivity and everything. It's just if it's raining, yeah. I just want to sit here and bang my head against the wall. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's funny, isn't it? Because I think that like, I was going to relate this to goal setting now and to think about the influence of your environment on not just your ability to set goals, but to also see them through. And I think that from personal experience and also, you know, from research experience, that the sun is like a battery and it energizes us. It, mm. it doesn't have to be hot. In fact, it's probably better that it's not too hot because then there saps us from energy. But the, vit- the definitely the vitamin D um, is good. Um, being outside a bit more, really good for the ADHD brain. Looking at a blue sky, looking at green trees, smelling nature, all of those lovely sensory, beautiful sensory experiences that you get on a lovely summer's day. I'm not thinking about the wasps or the bees or the other (laughs) like creepy crawlies that come and annoy you, but thinking about all the positives in nature. And then all of a sudden we're geared up, you know, for goal setting um, and achieving our goals. Um, And and yet in the winter, it can feel like such a slog to even just go into the office and write anything or call anyone or do anything. And that sort of fallow period, we begin to 
really get on top of ourselves for because we believe that we should be on the go all of the time throughout every single season our pace needs to be go 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 and that's not sustainable yeah yeah no I, 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 I agree I, I I I tell people just go for a 20 minute walk I know it's the most simple piece of advice I could give somebody but you know, a walk on, like you say, a not too hot day, a little sunshine in your face. It just it it just opens the the pathways in the brain. I mean, it, it, this just I'm sure we could dig into all the research, but to your mm-hmm. point, if if you're, you know, and maybe we can talk about this, but maybe it is creating the right environment for actually setting the goals and the mindset. And part of the mindset is feeling good and, and a nice crappy rainy day probably isn't the day to do that. So yeah. but it's, <laughs> it's, it's really interesting because I, I, I kind of also feel like there's the environment. And then as a woman, I'm very much governed by the moon. So the recent full moon we had on the 24th, which was two days ago, I I knew it was coming and I didn't do anything special, but I could feel how powerful it was. And I felt very frustrated with the last quarter, with what I'd failed to achieve. And it propelled me in a way. I think sometimes you've got to get to a state where you feel fed up of yourself or the lack of progress that you're making makes you feel as though you really need to get back on top. Um, and I could feel my urge to journal and to really set myself some parameters in which I dictate how I organize my day. Yeah. Um, and that helps me achieve goals. And I think that's that's the other key thing, not just for setting goals, but completing goals is time. Time to empty your head of all the noise of your busyness and your children and your husband and your family and your home and your pets and your job and your obligations and your social life and all of those things that we're involved in. So you need some uninterrupted time, whether that's 10 days like Dave in St. Martin, where he goes and puts his, uh, puts his sun visor on and puts his feet up and enjoys some reflection and forward thinking into the future about what's next or whether that is half a day in a cafe where you're not going to be distracted and you have a notebook or a project plan or whatever it is or just a to-do list of of things that you're thinking about empty your head Um, and that really can focus the mind because actually we're too busy often to set goals And then if we're too busy to set the goals, then we're definitely far too busy to achieve the goals. And then we get stuck in a vicious loop um, of of, of, of what feels like sort of, you know, a failure perfectionism loop. So, So goals are, I mean, they're important if you want to achieve certain things, right? So... We might have long term goals that we might be thinking, I want to save a deposit for a house, for example, or you have short term goals. You want to save a deposit for a holiday. Um, And both of those things are achievable. You can control them to a certain extent. Um, But what makes the difference between setting the goal and achieving the goal are the systems and processes you put in place. They're not necessarily you per se they're they're the development of a habit so with a savings goal short or long term you can write it down you can stick it on your wall you can visualize it you can can say your affirmations but if you don't actually create the standing order to transfer your salary part of your salary from your savings from your bank account into your savings account nothing's going to happen yeah so and we rely too much on our own action and not enough on our systems and processes and i think goal setting is one of those arenas that's really challenging for us adhders because systems and processes are not our bag yeah i mean is that where we get stuck do you think is is where uh, i mean i i would i would think we get stuck even 
you know, starting the process or knowing where to start, but, but as you say, some type of system. I know we did a, um, uh, we did an episode with somebody back last year. We talked about goals, but kind of understanding what type of goals and are they the right goals for you? And, 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 you know, and, and that's, I think we need to factor that into the equation as well. And, and goals, such a broad topic, like you say, it's, it's work, it's career, it's home. It's like you say, saving for a new home or a new car, or you want to remodel your home or, or, or lifestyle goals or, or vacation, what have you. But do, do you find that there are certain things that, um, trip us adults with ADHD up when it comes to starting to understand what goals to set? Yeah, and and, and I, I do. I think there's a number of things to trip us up um, because goal setting is part of our executive function. Mm. And as we understand, ADHD is a dysregulation of that. And so we're not necessarily going to be able to set goals in a structured and linear way and put in the systems and processes um that that mean that that the thing gets done we're more likely to achieve our goals in fits and starts in a kind of scattered and impulsive way Mm. the other thing about setting goals that i've found with adults with adhd who are entrepreneurs in business for example is too many things on the to-do list too many goals so then there's this sort of sense of scatteredness because they're working just on too many businesses or too many aspects so they might run a business and they'll do everything themselves but they'll set goals simultaneously for each year and that can lead to this kind of sense of being scattered and confused and forgetting what they're working on. So I think that can also trip us up yeah. because when you have multiple goals, you don't necess- that you're trying to achieve, you don't necessarily prioritise another executive function, um, the steps to take you to that goal because you're working sometimes in a hyper-focused way, sometimes in an obsessive way, sometimes in an urgent way, sometimes in an interest-based way on the things that are most important to you at that time. And so then the other goals can lapse. And what's more useful when setting goals is perhaps to think about goals in terms of one at a time and developing a system and a habit around one specific goal that lasts for say one quarter. But I think so we in- also talk about and and I think a lot of people have this perception of goal setting, like, oh, I'm gonna go run a marathon or I'm gonna you, you know do all the I'm gonna lose a hundred pounds or you know, but goal setting can be very short term as well. Like you say, like almost like your to-do list for the week. And as you mentioned, there's like you know, I, I've worked with some people who they, they just need to manage their workload and, and we're looking at the to-do list and they share it with me and I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> you know, they might even be in a, a somewhat of a chaotic work environment and they need to yeah. actually, sh- sh- as you say, kind of prioritize and and figure out how to set even the, those mini goals, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, we, we think about, we think about goals like, I don't know, losing losing 20 pounds. I mean, most women have been losing the same 20 pounds for their entire lives because it's a cycle of, you know, put hey, on me weight. too. <laughs> most, most men, let's all just jump in there. It's the same 20 pounds. You, you get to a certain age, whether you're a man or a woman, and that's right. We just keep throwing that <laughs> same 20 pounds around. So. Yeah. <laughs> and it's always 20 pounds as yeah, well. Right. So 
pounds is our tolerance mm. any more than 20 pounds and we we just think no that's that's really and then we we dial it back again um but weight loss for example it's probably a bad example but but weight loss you know is a prime example of us having the same goal repeatedly but we often have that goal and then we'll add more goals to our so that'll be for our health then we'll have one for our work then we'll have one for family and what i'm trying to say to the people that you know i come across who with adhd is work on one goal one goal per quarter and it it could be something as simple as drinking more water throughout the day that helps with weight loss you don't or or taking a 15 minute brisk walk or a half an hour walk those those two things if you can build that habit and that routine then you haven't got to keep motivating yourself and the motivation is the thing that's not consistent right with us yeah. so you so you know back to our where we started about this environment is everything so going for a half an hour walk at the same time, every day, rain, snow or shine is a thing that's going to keep the weight off. But if you only go for a half an hour walk when it's dry, chances are you'll be losing the same 20 pounds forever. Yeah. So it's building a habit and a routine. And that way, when the motivation is flagging, then you don't have to think you don't have to think about it. And it's the thinking and the executive function that become complicated so that's the way that's another way that actually i think when we have adhd we we trip ourselves up because we're setting goals for ourselves we're setting too many we're very distracted um we go in fits and starts we're inconsistent but building habits takes focus energy and time and if we can focus just on one thing and hyper focus on it then we've got more chance of it being successful over, say, a, a quarter of the yeah. year. So we we at the beginning we we tease the concept of fear in goal setting. Mm. So where does fear play into ADHD and goal setting, and what are those fears? that mm -hmm. are more common with the ADHD brain? Mm. Well, obviously, the first one is rejection. Mm. Like this rejection, sensitivity, dysphoria, that we are more likely to have a very strong inner critic. Our voice is, is very loud, mm -hmm. um, and it plays into our perfectionism as well, that nothing is ever good enough and we're not good enough. Um, and then there's there's a fear around naming your goals for fear that some if you tell somebody, they'll laugh at you or they'll criticise it or they'll say that, you know, you've got no chance because when have you ever been able to see something through before? And I think because we're impulsive, sometimes we can overshare what we're working on. And sometimes it's, you know, it's a bit like planting a seedling. You know, if you keep if you keep digging it up to show everyone the roots, the chances are it will die. Mm. Because every time you remove it from the earth and expose it, somebody looks at it and prods it and then you pop it back in and you're disturbing it. So I think be more stealth like in your goals almost you know if you say to yourself and make a commitment to yourself and be accountable only to yourself and say well right, i'm going to drink for 90 days i want to lose 20 pounds or whatever number it is or just feel fitter i'll do a half hour walk at 8 a.m i'm going to make sure i'm drinking two liters of water every day and you set your time and you go rain, snow or shine, you don't think about it, you just go and you've got your water bottle measured out at the beginning of the day and you know by the end of the day it's got to be empty, you'll see a habit build. And yeah. the habit is more important than the outcome. The process will then lead you to feeling a sense of success 
and you'll want to do it again and you'll get the lovely dopamine hit from feeling great about the fact that you can do something might be simple but you've committed to it but i think that sums up our our adhd brain part of it is is the overwhelm that we look at a massive project say at work um versus like you say creating more of a habit i know everybody's different and everything from the time of day that they want to work on it to the consistency to the you know to the actual time they commit to it in a habit um but but i think one of the common things however the person does it is as you say the the consistency and beginning to build that that habit if if like you say the the 20 pounds or the marathon is an overwhelming i know those are always the two scenarios we create when we discuss goals but it's an overwhelming scenario for most people mm. versus mm. just saying you know what i'm going to go run for 20 minutes a day or or mm. i'm going to i'm going to uh i'm going to push my plate away when i mm. eat half the food on it or something like that you mm. know mm. yeah mm. and then you know that fear of being overwhelmed can be worse than the overwhelm itself so in a sense like you know you're scared to be overwhelmed because you know how out of control you feel so you avoid that so you're going to be ambitious no you're not you're not going to be ambitious if you're scared that it's going to be too much and the irony is of ADHD and this is why I love the condition so much is that the better you feel the more ambitious you feel, the more that you, that you want to do and the more likely you are to feel overwhelmed. And then you put yourself back to square one. Yeah. So I think we can measure how, how well we are. We can measure our well-being by how much we're actually wanting to achieve. But we know that when we're wanting to achieve lots of different things in different areas, that actually we need to narrow our focus because we it's inevitable we're going to get to overwhelm yeah is there Isn't it? is there a like a i know people have uh like immediate obstacles to setting a, a, a goal do you see that where it's just like all of a sudden there's an obstacle whether it's legitimate or perceived does that does that play a factor yeah, because I think that's fear again, Dave. I think mm. I think again, it's it's past failure. Mm. I tried that before; it didn't work. I'm scared to try it again. It's it's fear of being criticised and harshly judged, your own inner critic and that of others. It's the 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 fear of feeling overwhelmed with responsibility. Yeah. Also, that fear because you know that you're inconsistent. We know that we don't always have the mental capacity to do the things that are on our list. But it 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 and so our goal setting, it it can sometimes end up either being a bit underwhelming in that we're just floating around not doing anything, stuck in stuck in routine and habit that's familiar and resisting change, or it can be overwhelming where we're feeling fabulous, sun shining, diet's going well, you know, everything's harmonious. And then we've got four projects all of a sudden that we're interested in. Right. So it, it's a flip side of the same coin. Um, but it it's that, but that, that fear and breaking through that fear um, often has its roots in, in the past things people have said or experiences we've had um, that make us feel insecure about setting goals. And, you know, it's very difficult to set a goal if you also don't have or don't know why you're doing it. What's the yeah. point? Why do you want to drink more water? Yeah. Why do you want to lose 20 pounds? Why do you want to run the marathon? Why do you want to run your own business? Like why? Why are you doing it? And we want to know. Adults with ADHD want to know. Yeah, we want to know. We're curious. What's yeah. our what's the internal motivation? And where's that? Where's that coming from? Is that a fear based drive? 
are we wanting to do things because we're in fear fear of not good in being not being good enough are we fearful of what people might say if we don't pursue things um so i think there's also this sort of sense of understanding why this particular goal is important it, you know i i am my in my businesses finances is my weak point and i know that i really do need to pay attention to finances just general generally tracking invoices check in various bank statements making sure my accounts are up to date making sure that i'm not overpaying all of that and i know i need to spend a quarter just understanding finances just setting up some systems getting some routines in place but i'm avoiding that as if it were like hell on fire <laughs> i'm just not interested in doing that at all but it's a recurring theme and it's um it's something that i know i need to address and so sometimes our goals can be not at, they're not aspirational goals they're not goals to get somewhere they're just goals to manage where you are in time in your life in your business in your relationship no and that you you're right that's a great point is that they're and and that's a the perfect scenario of running a business. There is just there are there are a handful of things that are are just not fun. They're not sexy. They're not interesting. But exactly. but you'll be out of business if you don't have paid some attention to it. So yeah, and 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 maybe you need to walk through the fire to get them done. But that that is, you know, it's not all like I say, say butterflies and whatever, you know. Yeah, precisely, precisely. And yeah, some goals are not, in and of themselves, are not worth pursuing. You know, I, I, I sort of feel like goals like that, I have absolutely no interest in. I, I, sorry, no. Someone's just come in. So my, my goal for my business isn't to make a ton of money. That's a, that's a consequence of my business. But I do feel like, that is the least interesting aspect of my business. So it's not a compelling goal and it's not, it's not a strength either, but it is an absolute necessity because even if I outsource it, I still need to understand it Yeah, sure. on a, on a basic level. I still need to know my business on it. So I think there are some goals that in and of themselves have very little um, reward when you get to the end of them. Um, yeah. But you can tick it off. You can tick it off, and it's part of becoming an adult, and it's a necessary evil. And attention must be paid to it. And if we can focus our attention just on that one thing, that one learning, or that one process, or that one system, then actually we have a much better chance of achieving um, a goal in the in that in that quarter or in that shorter term. Because yeah. it is the processes that that support the achievement. It's yeah. not the motivation. So as we wrap up, can you summarize somebody's listening to us now and they know they've got a bunch of uh, you know, goals they need to set. There's a lot of things that they want to accomplish, whether it's something that needs to be done by the end of the week or like you say, a, a longer term goal how does the busy adult with adhd uh let, let's 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 say all right first step you just need to carve out some time to kind of sit alone quiet and create the space and environment to kind of get your thoughts down what should they be doing from there kind of give yeah. them a quick roadmap yeah so start small get your quick wins so you know on your on your list of many goals um there are some that are that are very small that you can tick off immediately there are others that are bigger which are projects which are going to take more time so 
did, so looking at what are your short term and your long term goals is really important. The next step, I think, would be to work out what one goal on that list is going to make a real difference to you immediately, either to your health, if that's your priority, to your pocket, if that's your finances, to your relationship. So work out where your current uh, struggles are, or if you want to go into your zone of genius and your strengths, and you're not necessarily struggling with anything, work out what your strengths are, what, what changes you know that you can make that will elevate you and your business to the next level. So, so focus on the area. Start small, get your quick wins. Work out whether you've got short-term or long-term goals. If they're long-term goals, is it a project? Set a timeline for it. Only a only do that one thing. So do not go into this thinking, I'm going to achieve all of the goals simultaneously. Choose one, the one that's most important to you, and absolutely focus on that. I would say for a quarter, because after 90 days, we can pretty much exhaust our interest and passion for most things. So give it a good 90 days if it's a project, if you want to build a course, if you want to write some resources if you want to increase your social media, if you want to start a podcast, you can achieve most things in 90 days. So give yourself some time, focus on your strengths. So if you know you're bad at finance, outsource that. If you know you need somebody to write your content, outsource that. Um, and I suppose the other thing that helps us is if we can't see it, we don't know it's happening, so put things up on your wall. So yeah. whether that's post-it notes or a notice board or a tracker or in your calendar, just making sure you're accountable to yourself um, and having that regular check-in with yourself and being honest about what you did or didn't do and what you need to do next. So And then adapting as you need to, depending on your needs or your circumstances. Um, but I suppose the biggest thing is, you know, I keep banging on about this, but habits, systems, processes, yeah. as much as possible, get support with that because that's not in our zone of genius. So working with a therapist or a coach or uh, going online, finding some resources, just to be able to, make sure that in terms of your systems and your processes that actually you put those in place and when you've moved on from that goal you know that you can leave that that you've got the process you've got the system you know that that will sustain itself so that's my sort of pit stop um around goal setting and deal awesome. and the last thing is deal with any fear that you might have um by moving through it it will always be there get used yeah. to the feet and get unco get comfortable with it. Um, it's there to protect you, but it's not there to define you. So yeah, any fear uh, needs to be just worked through. Don't interrogate it or ask it what it's about. Just treat it like a, a shadow on the passenger seat that's always with you no matter what. Yeah. And I think that's a great place for a coach or a mentor as you, as you Perfect. said. So, yeah. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Beautiful. All right. As always, um, you've provided our listeners with a ton of value and and a pretty good checklist to get started if they're kind of stuck on on some goals. So um, yeah, yeah. So good. thanks again. I'm glad to glad to be able to connect again, and always good to talk about you know something that we're both passionate about. And yeah, let's hope it also helps us. <laughs> Yeah, it's always good to refresh our memories, right? And and uh, all the work. I'm a work in progress. Yeah, so, uh, uh, we all yeah. are, and that's that's what we yeah. need to we need to keep that in perspective. So, all right, yeah. cool. Well, uh, we'll come back anytime, and uh, we'll see you soon. All right, then. Thanks so much, Dave. Lovely to see you. Bye, everyone.